Okay, this is um, above the footnotes on page 13. The Lord said that Joseph Smith would be the first preacher to the Gentiles and to the Jews. The Lord promised him that these dispensational keys would remain with him during and after his mortal life until the second coming and that Joseph Smith would personally and literally lead the children of Israel out of bondage to Zion. Referring to his own ability to preach and teach the gospel, the prophet said, quote, I understand the fullness of the gospel from beginning to end. I can teach it and also the order of the priesthood in all its ramifications. Earth and hell have opposed me and tried to destroy me, but they have not done it and they never will. End of quote. Joseph Smith also said, quote, I was in the Grand Council and was chosen and ordained to this office to be the last and greatest prophet to lay the foundation of God's work in the last or seventh dispensation. End of quote. Joseph Smith was unlike any of the other leaders of the restored church, and that he was the only one who understood the whole plan. Quote, I have the whole plan of the kingdom before me, and no other person has. End of quote. Of the founding fathers of Mormondom, Joseph Smith was the only one of public record who had his calling and election made sure. Quote, I prophesy and bear record this morning that all of the combined powers of earth and hell shall not and cannot ever overthrow or overcome this boy, for I have a promise from the eternal God. End of quote. Brigham Young knew the following statement to be true. In a general conference of the church, he made the following statement, quote, he, Joseph Smith, holds the keys of that kingdom for the last dispensation, the keys to rule in the spirit world, and he rules there triumphantly, for he gained full power and a glorious victory over the power of Satan while he was yet in the flesh. End of quote. As the Lord's anointed holding the dispensational keys of the kingdom and the fullness of the priesthood, the role of Joseph Smith's physical presence among the saints was much more significant in the salvation of the church than many would like to think. The following statement by the prophet to the Relief Society was no doubt considered egotistical by many, but it proved to be prophetic. Quote, if I were not in your midst to aid and counsel you, the devil would overcome you. End of quote. On another occasion he said, quote, I testify that no man has power to reveal it but myself, things in heaven, in earth, and hell. End of quote. Joseph Smith is the Davidic servant in the last days. There is not going to be another future Davidic servant who will start a new work or complete the work that Joseph started. Joseph Smith laid the foundation and he will return to complete it to the capstone. To reject the prophet Joseph Smith as the Davidic servant, prophet, seer, revelator, and translator of the last days that will return and deliver Israel is to deny the revelations of Jesus Christ and the testimony of his ancient and modern prophets. Section 85 refers to a time when Joseph Smith will return to the earth holding the scepter of power, clothed with light for a covering. Quote, and it shall come to pass that I, the Lord God, will send one mighty and strong, holding the scepter of power in his hand, clothed with a light for a covering, whose mouth shall utter words, eternal words, while his bowels shall be a fountain of truth, to set in order the house of God. End of quote. Uh, continue on page 14. Regarding this revelation, the prophet Joseph Smith made the following prophecy. Quote, I then gave a revelation of my situation at the time I obtained the record, the Book of Mormon, the persecutions I met with, and prophesied that I would stand and shine like the sun in the firmament, when my enemies and the gainsayers of my testimony shall be put down and cut off, and their names blotted out from among men. End of quote. Joseph Smith declared himself and those he had personally ordained to be the servant of God in the last days. Quote, the servants of God in the last days, myself and those I have ordained, have the priesthood and a mission to the publicans uh, and sinners. End of quote. The saints never quite comprehended who Joseph Smith really was. The Lord had given the same promise to the prophet Joseph Smith that he had given to Abraham. Quote, for this anointing have I put upon his, i.e. Joseph Smith's head, that his blessing shall be also be put upon the head of his posterity after him. And as I said unto Abraham concerning the kindreds of the earth, even so I say unto my servant Joseph, In thee and in thy seed shall the kindreds of the earth be blessed. End of quote. In 1831, Joseph Smith told the saints that the Lord, quote, has given you, to all, given you all to me, end of quote. Just prior to his death, he stood before the saints and said, quote, 
I am your father, end of quote. Few, if any, of the saints realized that his statements were meant quite literally. If the inspired version of the Bible had been made available to the saints by that time, they might have realized who he really was and that they were his literal posterity. The prophet realized that his people were not able to accept who he really was. In one of his last discourses, he said, quote, You don't know me. You never knew my heart. No man knows my history. I cannot tell it. I shall never undertake it. I don't blame anyone for not believing my history. If I had not experienced what I have, I would not have believed it myself. I never did harm any man since I was born in the world. My voice is always for peace. When I am called by the trump of the archangel and weighed in the balance, you will all know me then. I add no more. God bless you all. Amen. End of quote. God promised Israel back in Moses' time that in the last days mortal, mortal Israel would be gathered from all the nations where they had been scattered. He also promised that all of Israel that had previously died in spiritual bondage would also be gathered, quote, from the utmost parts of heaven, end of quote. Ezekiel saw in vision the time when those of Israel on the other side of the veil would be gathered, quote, from the four winds and raised up. He saw that their dried bones clothed with flesh as the spirit of life was put back into their bodies, end of quote. This is consistent with the words of the Savior to his disciples in Jerusalem when he told them that prior to his coming his angels would, quote, gather together the remainder of his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other, end of quote. Although the Lord declared in January of 1841 that he had taken the fullness of the priesthood from the church, Joseph Smith pointed out in May of 1841 that, quote, the election of the promised seed still continues, and in the last days, they shall have the priesthood restored unto them, and they shall be the saviors on Mount Zion. End of quote. See also section uh, 113. Okay, continuing on on page 15. The Lord has promised to send his angels to prepare the elect for his coming. Few Latter-day Saints believe the, in the angelic return of the Lord's servant of this dispensation to prepare the elect for the second coming. Nonetheless, the Lord has decreed it. Quote, and whoso treasureth up my word shall not be deceived. For the Son of Man shall come, and he shall send his angels before him, with a great sound of a trumpet. And they shall gather together the remainder of the elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven from to the other. End of quote. That's in Joseph Smith, Matthew. Joseph Smith warned that angels are coming to gather out of his kingdom all those who offend. He warned that when the servants of God go forth warning the nations, both priests and people will harden their hearts and reject the light of truth. He pointed out that the people would be, quote, bound up, end of quote, by their creeds, false doctrines, and traditions, and that their bands would be made strong by their priests, false religious leaders, false prophets, apostles, bishops, etc. Quote, the angels are to have something to do in this great work, for they are the reapers, as, therefore, the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so shall it be at the end of the world. That is, as the servants of God go forth warning the nations, both priests and people, and as they harden their hearts and reject the light of truth, these first being delivered over to the buffetings of Satan and the law and the testimony, being closed up, as it was in the case of the Jews, they are left in darkness, and delivered over unto the day of burning. Thus being bound up by their creeds, and their bands being made strong by their priests, are prepared for the fulfillment of the saying of the Savior, quote, The Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and gather out of his kingdom all things that offend, and them which do iniquity, and shall cast them into a furnace of fire. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth, end of quote. We understand that the work of the gathering, oh, this is also a quote, we understand that the work of the gathering of the wheat and the tear into the barns or garners is to take place while the tares are being bound over and preparing for the day of burning, that after the day of burnings, the righteous shall shine forth like the sun in the kingdom of their father. Who hath ears to hear, let him hear, end of quote. That's in History of the Church, Volume 2. Then also, uh, another footnote, Quote, men and angels are to be co-workers in bringing to pass the great work, and Zion is to be prepared, even a new Jerusalem. End of quote. Uh, the return of the Lord's anointed and others to complete their mission in this dispensation, and the bringing forth of the sealed portion of the Book of Mormon, will create a great division among the people, a complete separation.
It will force the whole world to take sides with the Church of Christ or the whore. This event is referred to by the Lord as the controversy of Zion and as the strange act. It is what brings about the completion of the marvelous work in a wonder. Joseph Smith explained that the angel flying in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel that John the Revelator saw, would make his appearance when great wars, famines, pestilence, great distress, judgments, etc. are ready to be poured out upon the inhabitants of the earth. He identified the angel as himself. He claimed to be the special messenger, ordained and prepared for that purpose in the last days. One of Joseph's greatest concerns was that when he returned to convince Israel of the word which had already gone forth, the existing leadership in Israel would oppose him and deceive the people, just as it happened when the Savior offered the gospel to the Meridian Jews. Joseph Smith warned, quote, Woe, woe be to that man or set of men who shall lift up their hands against God and his witness in these last days, for they shall deceive almost the very chosen ones. End of quote. He also observed that, quote, False prophets always arise to oppose the true prophets.